What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Robbie Cassidy, and on this episode of the podcast, we're actually going to go back in time. I was challenged recently to look at my childhood and to reflect on my childhood and assess how different elements through my upbringing may have affected my way of thinking now. Uh, So it was something I journaled on a bit during the week, and I thought the best place to start because it was it cropped up it's top of mind and it's obviously involved with a lot of the people who listen to this podcast and who I work with is the idea of training for pain and from a young age I, I obviously for anyone who doesn't hasn't listened to podcast I started boxing when I was like maybe four or five years old very young and my father was the coach at the club and brought us through and all of my family did some bit of boxing at some stage but what within that time frame, we started also to train uh, to be able to withstand certain levels of pain. And the reason being is is really important. Uh, you can you can teach yourself, or you can. I want I want to teach you that you can train your ability to withstand and manage more pain. And as a result, if you're dealing with injuries or if you're dealing with issues, you'll find that you can start to apply these to your life. And as I said, this is something that's kind of come up through my life from a young age and I've been lucky to be able to be put in that position and then to come through everything go through college back it up with the research and and kind of take things different concepts from different areas try apply them and it's yeah it's it's something that hopefully you'll be able to gain a lot from so as I said much of the pain that we feel is in our mind and it's combined with the experience that we're dealing with now that doesn't mean that just pain is all in your head but there's an element that you can control and there's an element of perception around pain as well, and it makes a big, big difference. So we can elevate our levels of pain just based off our thoughts, our discipline, and our control, and what we do at certain times, and how we react to it. The more we're able to sit with pain, the less control it has over us. Okay, and, and that's across the board. Like being able, it, it, You could look at pain as a physical pain, or you could look at pain even from like delayed gratification, where you want something, but you have to continue working on something else for a longer period of time before you actually get that. So in this case, we are looking at more physical style pain. And I want to talk about how it can be, as I said, dictated by your perception. And once you understand that, you're able to, con- you have a lot more control over the pain and how it affects you. So one really simple analogy I always use is the idea of when you step on a piece of Lego at night it's a 10 out of 10 pain it's a really sharp shooting pain it's a stabbing pain and you react as you wouldn't react if you stepped on a nail or a sharp piece of glass but if you look at the same piece of Lego during the day and then you step on it the pain drops significantly even if you put the same pressure on it and the reason being is that our perception at nighttime drives it to the roof because we don't know what it is and the danger associated with it or what it could be is is heightened so our body gives us a load of pain we get back off it and once we get back off it we assess it we can step on it second time maybe like a one out of ten or a two out of ten the second time once the body has decided that it's not that big of an issue so understanding that understanding that we need to try sit with discomfort at times if you're looking to make a change and this is a huge part of of the back pain back to exercise program that we're running right now there's going to be another cohort opening up in March, but a huge element of it is understanding the pain, understanding pain sensitivity. And once you come to understand that, then finding levels that you're able to tolerate and working through those while you wait for the pain to drop completely. Because at a certain stage, it will drop off. It's not going to be around there forever if you work in the right direction. And aside from that, when you look at things like saunas, ice baths, cold dips, or even hard training, you can see how although people have they always say there's all these physical benefits and there is obviously physical benefits to them but there's so many mental benefits that we forget about and i think that we're too quick to drop the idea of the mental side of things because people often don't consider training the mental aspect it's easy to train the physical but to train the mental it's a lot more difficult and you have to take a lot more responsibility on yourself to train the mental Obviously, you do for the physical as well, but you can kind of go to a class and just ease your way through a class and, you know, feel all right and feel good at the other side of it, of, a, of, of a, like, let's say, a hit class. But when you're looking at mental training, you have to be more involved in it. You have to be more present with it because at any stage you can quit with mental training. You can quit with physical training as well, but you can really drop off. And when you are able to sit there and when you are able to really focus on it, 
you start to become more resilient and you start to be able to handle situations a lot better. And aside from the pain side of things, it helps you to control your emotions. So you don't lose the rag and get really pissed off and rage and like get angry at someone and make rash decisions because of the emotions that you're feeling right now when you know it's a bad decision overall. So there's a lot more to this idea of being resilient and to this idea of actually trying to understand your pain and trying to improve your pain. So to go way back, I was journaling on this and I was trying to figure out like where where did it start out? Where did my first, I guess, encounter with, with pain training start? And the earliest one I can remember is like maybe being eight or nine years old and we were put through this. This is like a weekly thing, pain training in boxing. And there was two sides to it. There was conscious and there was subconscious training, I would say. Subconscious picking up stuff from your environment. There was obviously sub- the subconscious side of things of wanting to be the best. So the, the training that we would do, they would challenge you. Everyone would challenge you, be like the first one to drop, second one to drop your hands and stuff like that would, would be the loser. You know, there was, there was always those challenges involved in the training. But having that identity of wanting to tough it out as well was another big one. I think that was inherently in the club that we were in between uh, my father, who was also Robert Cassidy, and Patrick McCormack, who were the two guys who really brought the club together and built it up from, a, from, from what it used to be, because there used to be a club there in Kilfenora, but it kind of went away and then it came back again. And the club to them wasn't just about everyone going in here boxing and, and smashing each other. There was, I distinctly remember having a class, this is a boxing training, when we were like nine years old, maybe 10 years old, learning how to shake someone's hand and look them in the eye. Like, where, where else do you learn that type of stuff? I've, that really, that really sticks out to me of like, where you have to stand up, chest out, look someone in their eye, shake their hand and make sure you have a firm handshake. Like that has nothing to do with boxing, but it has a lot to do with character building. And that was one aspect that they brought into training was that it, the boxing is, is, is kind of the, what we'll use, but we're creating good characters here. We're creating people, we're cre- creating men and women. And it showed then as the years went on because a lot of people still associate with the club, they still love the club, and they still talk about it for years, the stuff that they did in it. But when we were, and this is funny, anyone that's listened to this podcast that's in the club will probably remember this. When, when you're boxing, obviously there's an element of you can ha- be beaten on skill, but a lot of people when they're boxing and when they're in a fighting sport and a combat sport, and this isn't something that happens as much with team sports because it's not as common that you get into this situation, but you're able to quit in boxing. If you are hurt, you're allowed to quit and you can stop and come back. You can't really quit another team sport. You can quit, but you just get lazy and you just don't do anything. But when you quit in boxing, it's very obvious because you can't just quit for a couple of seconds. Like when you quit, it's over. And there was a huge element of, I think, in our club especially, and I really, I, when I think back on it, I don't really know anyone who had been stopped in a fight too often ever in in our club where they had to stop the fight because somebody was was had given up and yeah I don't I don't I, off the top of my head now I can't really think of that happening to anyone now obviously people get big shots and that's a different thing but it was something that was ingrained in us from a young age it's like it's all about heart a lot of it's about heart you can beat me on skill but you're not going to beat me through heart skill is practice heart is more like not giving up and it's control in the moment and there's a big pride element to that. And I think the club did a great job of, of breathing that and, and making sure that people would go out on their shield in a way. And uh, you can look at that in positives and in negatives, whatever way you want. But at a young age, people aren't exactly taking big, big shots. So it's a lot more about character building. And I think they did a really, really, really good job of doing that. But the con- that, So that was more of a subconscious side. But the conscious side of the training was funny because... As I was saying, anyone who was in there will distinctly remember this. I can imagine that you'll, you would never forget this type of stuff. We used to do this, these exercises where you have to try withstand and control and endure high levels of pain. And what they used to do is you'd have to hold your arms out, just out to the side, but then you'd have to do little circles. So they used the idea of fatigue combined with pain training, and then there was no timer. It was just whenever they felt like they were going to let you off the hook so you could be there for minutes at a time where you can't even lift your arms they're burning they're it's sore and what all they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to focus on something else so while the pain is there you're trying to focus on your breathing 
or you're trying to focus on a certain element of a skill that you might be trying to develop or you might be just trying to focus on enjoying it smiling laughing while the pain is there you know changing your perspective of what the pain actually is and so they holding the arms out was one wall sits were a killer because your quads be burning the other one then was like ab punches where you were up against the wall someone had gloves and they were hitting you or on the ground where you were lying down and they were punching you and they retrained and i don't the funny thing is like my father and patrick are not um not let's say in the medical field specifically but they're very intuitive so what they did for people is they retrained their ability to withstand and control pain and then tra- change their reactions to pain and when i look at the way my approach is now i can see how i have integrated this into my approach as well because it makes a huge difference if you have a lot of pain and if you grimace and really like oh that's killer or if you start laughing both of them are a reaction when you laugh the pain doesn't last last as long and you have a different perspective on it okay and you can laugh at pain so there was different elements to it that they did and they started to really integrate those and i remember one time like we were down boxing in rathkeel and we were just doing rounds upon rounds upon rounds my god my face at the end of it was so scratched up just from doing it. I think it was like 12 three-minute rounds, which is professional level, but it was just jumping in, having different people come in and out at different times. And I can remember hurting so often and you come back to the corner and you'd be hurting and they would ask you how you're doing and what you're focusing on and stuff like that. And it really taught me how to control it a lot better. But the continuous tests would be to see if people could handle it. But they weren't putting the tests out there. You were kind of testing yourself. But in the training sessions... There was no space for, I don't want to say weakness because you had to be able to be weak. There's no question with that. But there was no space for not giving 100% effort. And I think that was something that they really did a a great job in pushing. And they still do to this day. They still do a really, really good job of pushing that uh, and creating good characters and creating good people from it. Because they still run, they still run the club now. There's more people involved in the club as well, which is which is excellent. And the younger people, especially the guys who box there coming up, are still running it, and which I love to see because there's some some excellent guys in there and girls in their training at the moment. But the continuous tests were massive, and I think that we don't realize how much of an effect that had on our personality until later in life. Uh, but then again, when you would finish a test, so when you'd finish the arms and you'd finish the shots to the body or you'd finish the wall sits to be love and laughter after always everyone would be laughing and everyone kind of because we were all in it together so everyone would struggle through it together but it did you could see there was some people that weren't up to the task didn't know what they were getting themselves into um and you could say it kind of broke a few not broke broke is the wrong word because it's not like it emotionally traumatized them or anything like that but a lot of people thought it was a waste of time and they didn't see the purpose and they left and they didn't really stick in the community so we did have a really tight-knit community at different stages which was which was really good and still meeting those people today like you would in a football team it's great it's a great thing to have so to go back to it another one then another so that was the pain trainer from a younger age as i got older then got called up to myself and a few of the others in the club got called up to this monster high performance team and it was basically a development squad um a monster development squad we had a guy over the team his name was Jimmy Payne, and I'd love to get him on this podcast sometime. I, I really should. He was over that team. He was over. He was with Davy Fitzgerald with Clare when they won the All Ireland. He was at Davy Fitzgerald in Waterford, and he was also working with the Irish Olympic boxing team. And he introduced us to this idea of it was nearly like a hypnosis or controlling the mind. And he, it was the whole idea, right? Was an iron bar doesn't bend. That was one of the concepts that he used. An iron bar doesn't bend. And he showed us how you could put it into practice. So he would he would talk to you or whatever, and then I'd be standing up, and then he just pushed me over, and I would collapse down. You know, I'd collapse over on my side, and then he would catch me before I fell and hit the ground. But I would have collapsed into a kind of a heap. And then he would use his hypnosis, and he would kind of chat to you, and he'd talk you through it. And he would say, an iron bar doesn't bend, an iron bar doesn't bend. It's like You have to kind of visualize that, and everyone on the team would be visualizing that. And then when you did the push, you would just fall like a plank of timber and then they would catch you. But there was no fear, there was no anxiety, there was nothing around it. Well, the first time you were falling, you were like, oh, trying to catch yourself. And this, he 
he had told us like this idea of the iron bar doesn't bend it's used at every level and John Joe Nevin when he won an Olympic bronze medal that was something that he used because what it does is it teaches you that you're not going to break you can continue to fight or you can continue to push on even if the pain is there but you're not going to lose by giving up or bending to pain and this was really this was a, an eye-opening moment for me because you can see that obviously there's certain there's levels to the game of boxing and like the absolute top of the top level have mental strategies that help them to manage pain better in different situations in every sport and i think the more that we come to understand that and we look at the strategies they use people say well i'm not a high performer i'm not high uh, i'm not an athlete but you still do the same stuff you still exercise you still want the best for yourself so why don't you just take some of the strategies that they apply and the ones that work apply them to your own life and see how they can fit into you so that was a huge one the idea of an iron bar doesn't bend and I have a memory of a strong memory I, I'll never forget it of when I was boxing in it was an Irish collegiate final it was minute one of the first round I had I knew the guy he was top class boxer I ducked to kind of slip a hook and on the way down he met me with an uppercut straight away and just broke my nose minute one of the first round a horrible feeling for anyone who's had it so you get this to describe it because just for if you haven't had it or if you have had it so when that happens to you, you get this cold icy feeling that starts across your face and it goes out underneath your eyes and your whole face just gets really really cold for a second then your eyes go completely black like you're awake you're conscious but you can't see anything at all nothing around you and you're you're moving around but it's like you're in space you really can't see anything but you're still conscious so I still knew I had to hold my guard up I still had an idea of based off of the sound where he was but I couldn't I couldn't see anything and I remember going back to the corner saying it to saying it to my father like I cannot see a thing right now um because he was like kind of calling when they obviously when the round was over he was able to jump in and kind of lead me back to it but then you can start to feel your nose close off okay so you can't breathe through it at all and when you try to breathe it feels like it's blocking more and more and more and the blood starts running down into my gum shield so I can feel everything as the as I'm kind of consciously getting my sight back in the corner so we got back they settled me down we talked about okay right this is the next round reset gave instructions and went out and as I said I could not breathe at all at all at all one nasty feeling for anyone this is I won't go on too much more about it, but one nasty feeling that you'll always remember if you've if you've broken your nose especially in a fight is that when they stick the tissue up when they when they roll it up and they put it into your nose in the corner after it's been freshly broken is an eerie feeling where they dig the tissue into your nose and you know the nose is is cracked and then they twist it and lodge it in place it's a horrible feeling oh it's a horrible feeling and when it comes out then again you go back in but for the rest of the fight okay every so we went out back out round two I was like okay I need to manage here for a second I can't just get into it but every single time I got hit in the face because he was a good boxer I could feel the nose grinding over and back because of it had obviously been fairly significant fracture so I could feel it grinding in my nose over and back and in the middle of the second round I remember that idea of the iron bar doesn't bend coming back and I remember thinking that well if this is as bad as it gets it's not really that bad you know i can feel this i can feel the pain but it's not really all that bad so continue to whatever can you fight improve as the round went on but i ended up losing the fight in the end but i learned a huge lesson about managing pain and the mental aspect of managing pain in that specific scenario the idea of focusing on the next task in front of you this is something that you can everyone can take away is that when you are in pain instead of trying to instead of sitting in sorrow and thinking about how bad everything is and how it's all working against you you need to try focus on what's the next task in front of you that you can do to improve it or improve yourself or put yourself in a better position so in an hour's time you'll be in better in a better position in a day's time you'll be in a better position and you look to build momentum on on that so it's that one percent improvement every day continue to do that over a long period and you'll notice that the first off the pain doesn't bother you as much you're not as afraid of it or scared of it and you 
have a lot more confidence in yourself and in your body to be able to manage when it kicks up. So you're dealing with everything as necessary and you can do it that loads of ways. You can do it breathing, you can do it through meditation, you can do it through light movements, kind of leaning into it, touching off it, all these other aspects. And I, I really do truly feel that the revelations they're making on pain now, and as we talk about them, in years to come, are going to be able to help us heal medical conditions, is all I would say. Because there's an aspect of our society has gone away trying to avoid pain and mask pain and take painkillers. When pain is a director, it tells you what to do. And the better understanding you get of it, the better able you're able to manage your own life and lifestyle and your own health. So I think that as we get old, as this matures and the more they look into it, the understanding of pain will have a huge impact on people's ability to heal themselves is all I would say right now so yeah there that's the there the, that's the kind of main story that I wanted to, to get across is that idea that once you do get into that place that it's really bad it's about the mental aspect right there you can't let the mental take over the idea of focusing on the next task in front of you build the momentum dealing with it as necessary is going to be huge and there's m different strategies you can use to manage pain a lot better the same strategies will work for somebody who's in chronic pain as they do work for an athlete. Your mindset towards the pain is key. And with injury, understanding that the body is strong, it's resilient, and it's adaptive will give you a much different perspective. It frames it a lot different because then you're not thinking that everything that you do is damaging. Instead, you're thinking that, okay, well, if I do the right things at the right time, I'm gonna get a little bit of pain, but it's gonna put me in the right direction. It's gonna improve everything overall. And a really simple one is that when it gets to the point that it's very sore, people often say it, breathe, practice breathing, but just normal inhale, hold for five or six seconds, normal exhale. Settle yourself. Focus on the task. Control the controllables. What are the controllables? The controllables are what you can do right now whether that be little movements. It doesn't mean that it's going to get rid of it right now, but it's going to help it tomorrow. And the more you have, like if you can get that frame into your mind, it's going to put you in the right direction. It's never about getting rid of it completely today. It's about what we can do to be 1% better tomorrow. That's the goal. Pain can be trained. You're able to train your ability to withstand pain better. People, you're not going to like doing it. It's not an enjoyable experience. But if you change the reaction, it can become an enjoyable experience. So do you grimace and act really let out how, how sore it is? Or do you laugh at it? Do you do it in a community where people are also in the same situation as you, where you can chat about it? All of these aspects of, of how you, what your mindset is and how you frame the pain is going to be huge. So... To finish off this podcast, I just wanted to talk about that you are able to train your ability to withstand and manage pain. Much of the pain that we feel is in our mind, and then it's combined with the experience around us. And although we are, there's a physical aspect to any injury, like an ankle sprain or a knee injury or whatever it is, there is also a mental aspect. And the mental aspect is a little easier to control at the start, and then as a result, it will help you control the physical. But if the mental runs wild, it becomes a lot more difficult to control the physical. We elevate our levels of pain based off our thoughts, discipline, and control on what we do, our reactions. But the more we're able to sit with the pain, the less control it has over us. And it is controlled by our perception, a huge amount of it. So if there's one thing you can take away from this today is if you are in pain, if you're feeling an injury, if you have, if, if something kicks up, whether it's a, a shoulder issue that's just annoying, or if you were had doms in the gym, or if you hurt your knee recently, or if you hurt your knee or whatever, or you hurt your ankle, I should say, or whatever it is, Take a step back, take a nice inhale, a nice long hold, and an even longer exhale, hold at the bottom, and then make a decision about what you're going to do. And you're going to have a clearer idea. But that's all I'm going to talk about today. And I hope that was able to give you a better insight into where the understanding of, of, of pain has, has come from and how we can really 
how we can improve it and that it's not all about just masking the pain and waiting for it to go you have to be proactive about it um, and hopefully those stories weren't too nasty to think about um, but give you different insight into that we all go through pain and we're all, we all deal with pain and it's not a nice thing but we can all come out the other end of it and I'm really really happy to see that the back pain back to exercise group program is doing so well right now because people are starting to understand that we're only coming into at, we're at the end of week two people are starting to understand that there is so much more to the pain that they feel than what they have thought in the past and what they've been told in the past very last thing I would say is that if you are interested in learning more about pain and the root cause of pain and how your nervous system has a huge impact on what you feel and the complexities of that I have a free guide that you can just click the link in the description of this podcast and you'll see it's understanding the root cause of chronic pain and it, the same goes for any little injury that keeps niggling it doesn't you don't have to be a chronic pain patient but if you're dealing with a nagging injury or recurring injury this will give you a better understanding of exactly why that's happening and how you can fix it so check that out it's in the link of or I'll put the link in the description of this podcast but that's all for me today hope everyone out there is doing well I'd love to hear from you uh, if you have any questions or anything like that reach out on Instagram it's the mobility tutor right now but that possibly could change very soon just sticking that out there and for now I will chat to you all again soon have a good one